One of the infantile conditions I've come across at the clinical settings is S. palsy. The condition is very disabling and parents need to pay much attention to the award if having the condition. Now the condition can well be managed with physiotherapy. There are exercises that can be prescribed for the child or that can be done for the baby to gain muscle strength and to achieve massive range of motion in the arm. And the S palsy causes weakness in the shoulder muscles and then um, it's it's a condition that affects the upper nerve root of the brachial presses. So you could imagine the nerve that will be affected. Mostly S palsy is very painful, especially during passive stretching, the child will be crying because it's very painful and the child will be feeling discomfort when you start treatment. So I'm going to talk about the constraint-induced therapy as used in S palsy. One thing I have observed is that um, this constraint-induced therapy I'm going to talk about is an effective treatment that can help improve movement in the affected arm. Now aside all the exercises you do and the electrotherapy, therapy, the massages, tactile stimulation, passive mobilization exercises and other things. So aside all these, the constraint induced therapy in Elf's palsy is also very effective in improving arm movement. Now this is a special treatment used for children with brachial presence injury, mostly S palsy. It is an effective method to improve arm movement. The weakened affected arm is forced to be moved as the unaffected arm is restricted to be moved. This is the simplest technique. So PT can load up the unaffected arm so that it becomes heavy such that the child cannot move it. Even if the child tries moving the unaffected arm, because of the heaviness, it will try using the affected one just like that, just to be able to grasp the particular thing. Now, children with Elf's palsy prefer using the unaffected arm more often than the affected arm due to the pain and weakness in the affected arm. As children are curious, and want to touch anything that appears before them when their good arm is restricted though they cannot control the weak arm that much they will try hard to touch the thing with their affected arm this will gradually improve movement in the affected arm 